Here's the situation. You have a filterable spreadsheet. What you need is a way to sum visible data based on multiple criteria, like a sum ifs subtotal function would work if Excel had one. So let's take a look at this example here. I have my regions and my products and my amounts. What I'm interested in doing is getting a sum for just the debits. In other words, a sum for anything over zero for each one of the product groups. I used Excel's sum ifs formula on fasteners right here and it works. That's the answer I want to get. But when I come down here and I want to look at just say New York and use my filter, this doesn't change. This doesn't change and it's not going to because it's always evaluating the entire set whether it's visible or not. And because I'm just in, interested in New York right now, I want the results to adjust accordingly. Excel has a group of formulas called subtotals that work on visible data only and that's going to be part of my solution. So up here in my formula I'm using subtotal with the number 9 argument for summing. Then I have this offset row min row strategy for marking visible versus non-visible rows. And it's going to force it to go down row by row to check each one. So this is going to be an array that's going to return either a 0 if it's not visible or a 1 if it is visible. I'm going to start this whole thing with some product because some product is going to take the result of the first array, multiply it by the result of the second array, multiply it by the result of the third array, and then it's going to add the results together. And I'm, since I'm using the subtotal function with 9 for summing, it's going to be marking these rows one by one accordingly with either a 1 or a 0, meaning include it or don't include it, and then it's going to apply its sum function so it's going to sum the equivalent dollars. So the second array right here is my first argument, and what it's doing is it's uh, checking all the products to see if it equals what I have typed here in cell B7, which is fasteners. So if this is a fastener, it's going to return a true. If it's not, it's going to return a false. Now I can't use words in a uh, formula like this. I'm going to need numbers. So by putting the double negatives in front of this, it's going to change a true to a 1 and a false to a 0. The next argument here is checking the dollar amounts. Is it greater than 0? True or false? So if we look at these three uh, arrays, the first one, if it's a 0, then anything after that doesn't matter because a 0 times anything is 0. But let's just assume it's visible, so it's storing a 1. Then it's going to say that the second one is a fastener, so that's a 1. And that it is greater than 0, so that's a 1. So I'll have 1 times 1 times 1, the answer to that is equal to 1, which means, okay, include that row in your subtotal sum and then it's going to take the dollars for that row and include it. And then it's going to go down to the next row, and down and down and down and down, and when it gets to the bottom, it adds it all together, and that's how it comes up with its answer. So let's come back up here and check this and see. We'll look at New York again. So fasteners for New York should be $250. So fasteners, there's 100, that's a positive number, so I include it. 100 positive, 50 positive, that's 250, that's the right answer. Material positive, positive, positive. I'll just highlight this and come down here. It's 290. That's the right answer. Tools, 425. That's positive. Tools, 30. That's positive. That's 455 already. Tools, that's negative. Don't include it because I'm only interested in the debit amounts. So that's working. Let me show you how I did that. And that is a way to solve this need.